Hello YouTube, I'm back yet again with another rant video. This one is going to be different from the previous rants I did because those I could assume they feel they kind of felt excruciating from what I was explaining and these were more like um, the uh, personal news for people who possibly got hurt or people who made fools of themselves. So this is going to be a more a different topic based on uh, interest rather than the news and politics. And um, I'm just going to go straight forward with this video. So I'm going to be talking about the cryptids. Uh, you could talk about all of them, but I'm rather just give a brief dis a description of like what they're all, what they're about, and then try to be more articulate in this uh, in this uh, conversation, whoever I'm talking to, and then I'll be able to share it with you guys. So, um, so we all know they are endangered. The cryptos are endangered. It's like they're very hard to find. Um, like they're possibly urban legends, like uh, you can, whatever you call them. But um, what I would think is that they're supposed to be creatures that are unknown to the world that could that are found in very like deserted areas, places that usually not many people would go to. And who have haven't possibly discovered the area because the world is so big. It's like it's just that there's still so much we haven't discovered yet or learned how big this planet truly is. So I'm in, so rather than continue explaining what I was just about what I was talking about, I'm just gonna go straight to the monsters, the cryptids. So I'm gonna be starting off with the Mothman. When I first heard heard the Mothman, I was thinking from that show I used to watch. I think it was, it was called uh, The Tick. It was the animated series was back in like the 90s, like, it wasn't really a Mothman, it was really a man dressed up as the Mothman, but, um, like, um, reason being that why I want to talk about the moth Mothman is because I feel the reason you can kind of tell in this picture he's hiding in a cave, and there's a man with a flashlight, I think the Mothman realizes, like, in his, in his like, from his experience or from, like, his struggles, possibly, like, He's trying to find other, um, his kind, he's trying to find his, his breed, like, so he can possibly poke, find some place to hibernate and find shelter where there's less humans, because I think he's aware that people are known to killing insects and because, because of their, they're disgusting, because they have a, they claim, the people claim that they have a disgusting appearance, they are gross, and they don't want them, in, and they don't want, and they, yeah, of course, there's issues with people, uh, like, noticing that bugs do infest areas and that they want to keep their crops safe, their property, and so the Mothman is trying to keep itself in the clear, but there are people who are who want to use insects, who want to find insects that they can gather for their research and use to make money off of their collection if, if they put, if they try to escalate it into, to the point where they're going to try to kill the Mothman and then like I mentioned, they, the cryptids are possibly endangered creatures, so that's my point of view. <clears throat> so on the bottom, we're going to be talking about the Dogman, which happens to be the Michigan Dogman. Um, whenever I think of the Dogman, I always think of Goosebumps, because there was a werewolf. Like, I don't think he's anything special. I think he's just possibly a bigger werewolf. Though I think he was originally human, it's just that during, um, uh, like, just like the werewolf, whenever he sees a full moon during in the middle of the night, he transforms, like, he isn't too special to me, so, and he's, like, my least favorite, so I'm not gonna explain too much about him. And then we're gonna go into Ogopogo, he's more of a sea serpent, a long, scary, giant sea serpent. I personally think that, like... The, uh, that Ogopogo is one of the types that chooses the lake for itself, and, uh, it's one of the more, the biggest sea serpent from what I can tell, like, I don't know that any, unless there's an anaconda, I personally think that the Ogopogo personally prefers to, like, hide in the dark, but I think during the middle of the day when there's less people, like, like, he will, like, he will probably not show up, I think, during the middle of the day, because they'll show, then people will be aware of what the Ogopogo looks like, and they could kind of reveal his identity, and then personally try to have it, and have probably possibly try to have it, uh, uh, hunted down. And you can tell it's, it's not, it's not a cute creature, it's the more, uh, sneaky creature that personally prefers to hide. 
and especially around people, although you can tell that people are more vulnerable towards it, like, you still don't want to take any chance of, uh, like, being extinct. So, and then the bottom, the chupacabra. I think this is more and more of the, known as the goat killer in Mexico, from what I recall, like, I first heard of it, this means my San Francisco, I first heard of it from a show called Dexter's Laporte, and that's from the 90s, well, just like the dick. It was actually, Dexter's Laporte it was actually funny as well, because, like, when I, because when, um, uh, Chupacabra was actually a creature that Dexter invented, that he was actually, actually, he actually happened to be one of Dexter's experiments, and he went, he went to Mexico to retrieve him. From what all I know is that um is that Chupacabra eats uh, many of the ghosts by feel like if its life feels threatened, it'll attack in self defense. And although the creature does look scary, you can't always say that people are innocent whenever it comes to Chupacabra. And I feel this is one of the cuter um cryptids I would have to call this. In in Japan this would be referred as Suchinoko the fat snake. It's a glutinous snake that tends to eat, then how much it shouldn't consume, but it can, can consume much because it seems really slow, it's small. But I don't think it's pink, but that's just the picture I found. But the I think the first time I heard of Suchinoko, I'm not gonna be, you're not gonna to believe this, this is from a show called Mob Psycho 100. Like, um, I do believe there's more, you can kind of tell there's more than one Suchinoko, and I personally think people are trying to capture Suchinoko because to prove that the fat snake does exist and maybe they can use it as a as a like a like a, a doll as a figure like so people can actually make uh, sell off uh, make merchandise off the Suchinoko whether it is stuffed or the or make um, toys of itself that uh, would uh, rep that would duplicate it how it looks right now because I did find that I'm not gonna end star I did find a pink Suchinoko and that's how they would describe the the way Suchinoko looks as it is right now so and then we're gonna go straight into Jackalope it has, it's basically uh, with uh, a, a bunny rabbit with the uh, with the uh, and with, it has like the antelopes tusks it has like the antlers it has like the an antelopes antlers like so you can tell so it's one of those creatures like kind of similar to a gazelle like, and it looks like it's in a safari area it's green like i don't know where it's like you can find it because like it doesn't look, it look like a far safari area but like it's just like any other rabbit it would run it you because it's well known it has like the same instincts that rabbit but it usually prefers to you know, like hide it would be around less people be what's more comfortable around other like uh, people uh, creatures of its species of its kind that are like rodents or furry creatures that are a lot, a lot smaller compared to humans obviously and then one thing i do kind of kind of sense that this creature is definitely would be definitely be around would be very comfortable around rabbits and bunnies because like although it may not be cuter than suchinoko but like it can kind of see the resemblance. It can notice that the the when they see when the when if the jackalope were to see bunny rabbits or those kind of creatures like uh, similar to way it looks, that it can it can, it can I feel like it, it can find its home there. And then Nessie. Wow, I this might sound unbelievable, but like um, Nessie was actually from Super Mario sixty four. The the first time I saw it and heard about it, like. Yeah, most of these creatures I'm pretty much most of these cryptids I'm pretty much hearing that that I know are from like certain are re like not they're not ref yeah these creatures are referencing from those movies or anime or those games but I know it's like before I even heard of the cryptids I know I always see them in certain types of movies or games or like the shows I'm telling you that I'm talking about right now so Nessie was more of a helper in Mario but in here it's like it's a dinosaur that lives like in the ocean simply because like maybe that's where its comfort zone is like and you can notice like maybe the people were looking for it in this picture it feels endangered so just like all the other dangers they f they feel they need to be safe and i feel like nessie is, is having the most trouble because there's personally dinos actually dinosaurs are supposed to be extinct 
and it doesn't it doesn't feel like it feels like it's better off on its own and i feel bad like i think if, if you go too far off on the ocean you and you feel like you're nowhere close to land then there's a chance you might end up meeting nessie so and then to the others danger th is the uh, dangerous uh thunderbird creature fire i think you, you all should remember us from uh either harry potter fantastic beasts the fantastic beasts or how which movie you prefer to call prefer to address the from it's either harry potter or the fantastic beasts but it's one of the more um magical type of creatures that like maybe that can assist harry potter or any other wizard because it's special in its own way because not because it can fly but it's able to conduct electricity as well and cause tornadoes but so like this is some one of the creatures that you want to piss off the most because if you if it ends up having a bad day it might take it on everybody and then the last thing the last script that i'm going to go to is bigfoot i the first time i heard of bigfoot was from several like books I think the first time I heard about because I was concerned how young was I was from movie the from that Goofy movie the like uh, where Max and Goofy they go camping they meet up with Bigfoot and they're and I think um, Goofy wants to take Max for uh, to, on a field trip to go ship fishing with him to spend some time because he didn't want him to get he wanted to he wanted to avoid Max getting in trouble so he kind of in a way kind of discipline him kind of uh, feel safe because you may this may sound crazy but like in the movies that uh the principal was threatening to give max the electric chair because that he was trying to like convince goofy he's trying to persuade goofy to think how bad of his son he was and he was trying to cause riots and like instigate fights with this with the students so that's well, that's how they that's how in the movie they end up killing Bigfoot. But Bigfoot is usually the type that lives in forests, as you can tell. He claims that is his own land. Like he feels he doesn't need anybody harassing him. Like uh, I feel like his distant brother or cousin is the abominable snowman. Uh, and maybe he, maybe who knows he, he's maybe he's the abominable snowman during the winter. Just that like he is one of those creatures that he more popular compared to all the cryptids i have to say be honest like because we hear a lot of rumors about him his name is more popular and usually when you see a big when you see a huge footprint on the um on the ground or in the soil whenever you go camping or whatever or if you're in like uh, a forest area people will um, most likely claim that it's bigfoot and that, that that they'll take this opportunity to look for him and take pictures and that's what the issue is that people want to take pictures rather than think of for their own safety and that's where bigfoot feels intimidated he goes after the people that are trying to look for him because he claims that they're after him because he feels that he's in danger and that he will be hunted up as their as the next prey and that it's his right to defend his area where he's living and himself and hope you guys enjoy this video hopefully i'll be able to do more content be sure to check your notifications and you comment like and subscribe thank you